Hello Sunday Club, I've got another true story from the Bible for you and it's from the book of Mark chapter 3. And before we have the story, uh, let's just use our imaginations. Just think what it would be like if you had one good hand and one hand that just wouldn't do what you want it to do. So it's very weak and um, uh, it's got no strength at all just can't do much with it at all or, or nothing nothing at all with it well that would make a massive difference think of your um hobbies and, and your likes and think of um maybe going to the park you won't be able to climb up the ladder so easily to go down the slide or hold on to the swing to go really high um climbing up climbing frames is harder much much harder isn't it with just one hand that works and that's strong and so um this story is about somebody that's got that problem i'm thinking about my hobbies i like to do craft and sewing and things like that and i would find that um, very very difficult if my right hand for example didn't work because that's my strong hand that does most things okay so we'll have our story and just before we do that um i've just explained that there's a word used in this that you may not understand it's the word sabbath which means the lord's day the day of rest and on the day of rest we're supposed to um take time to relax and rest and concentrate on the lord and that's what we do we go to church on sundays um in those days in the bible the lord's day was on a, a saturday that was the sabbath Okay, let's have our story. Jesus had quite a different way of teaching God's laws from the Jewish religious leaders. One group of these leaders called themselves the Pharisees, which meant separated ones. They kept themselves separate from anything or anyone that might not be pure according to their rules. They tried very hard to be good and spent their lives keeping every tiny little rule that had been added to the law over the years that God gave through Moses. Hundreds of extra rules had been added to the commandment that says, remember to keep the Sabbath day holy. The Pharisees taught that anything that they called work was forbidden on the Sabbath. They said that healing was work so no one could call the doctor unless the patient was going to die before the Sabbath was over. One Sabbath, Jesus came into a synagogue and saw a man who had a paralysed hand. He couldn't use it to do a daily job and earn his living properly. The Pharisees in the congregation watched Jesus with eagle eyes. Was he going to break their rules? by healing this man. Jesus knew exactly what they were thinking. He had already been in trouble with the Pharisees for not making his disciples observe their rules. He called the man to the front and then turned to all the people and asked a question. Do you think that the Sabbath should be a day for helping others or doing them harm? He asked them. Which does our law really mean us to do? No one answered. They knew that Jesus had the right idea about God's law, but they were afraid of their leaders. Then Jesus looked at the hard, uncaring faces of the Pharisees, and he was angry. He knew that they didn't want to help the man. They were only trying to find an excuse for getting Jesus into trouble. But he was not afraid of them. Stretch your hand out, he told the man. And at once the man found that he was able to hold out the hand that had been useless and lifeless. Now it was as good and strong as the other hand. Well, the Pharisees got to their feet and hurried out. They would now look for others to join them in their campaign 
to get rid of Jesus. Okay, let's just have a look at that scene now. So here's Jesus with two of his disciples and he's gone into a synagogue and that's where he sees a man with a paralysed hand. Let's have the man in the scene. Jesus asks him to come out to the front. So there he is with the hand that just won't do anything, it won't work. But remember, the Pharisees are watching Jesus like a hawk. So let's make room for them. They just want him to do something that doesn't fit in with their rules. They've made all those extra rules that are nothing to do with God. And then Jesus says to everybody, what do you think God really wants people to do? Help others on the Sabbath or do them harm? And they're all absolutely quiet because they're afraid of those rulers and afraid of getting into trouble. But they're thinking, yeah, surely God wants to help people. He's a loving God. So Jesus says to the man, stretch out your hand. And he does. So let's see what the man looks like after that amazing miracle. There he is. Look, he's stretching out his hands, both together, both as good as each other now, strong and healthy. But the Pharisees are cross. You can see that in their faces, I think. They want to get rid of Jesus. They prefer saying to all the people, you should follow lots and lots of rules. So they storm out. So let's just think about what we've learned from that story. Well, there's quite a lot going on in this story and we can't really talk about it all today. So we'll save some of the things for another day. But what I want us to focus on today is that miracle that Jesus did. And it points to Jesus being God because there was the man with the diseased hand and suddenly he's healed. Now you could go with a, a diseased hand to a doctor and he may be able to help you, but he can't just speak and it's suddenly better like Jesus. He might send you um, for some exercises to do that a physiotherapist might help you with, or you might need an operation. And it all takes quite a long time to improve something that's not working properly. And some things just won't ever get better, sadly. But Jesus just spoke words and immediately it was better. So a massive miracle took place there. And it shows us that Jesus has power over disease. He has the authority to heal people. He has authority over disease. Last week we looked at the way he has authority um, to forgive sins and this week um, authority over disease. So Jesus is a man, but he's not just a man. He is God as well. And this is pointing to that. And we have to make our, up our own minds. Do we believe that? Do we believe he is God? Those Pharisees were having a big problem, weren't they, in believing that? But we've got the rest of the Bible to help us to make up our minds. And we can have a talk with God any time we want to. Um, to talk to him about helping us to believe and helping us to see the truth. So we're going to have a, a little prayer now and uh, before that I'll just remind you of um, the memory verse that we've got and that's from Matthew 28 and it's verse 18 and this is when Jesus said I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. So those words are really worth remind, remembering and reminding ourselves of when we're not sure 
um, about how powerful Jesus is, especially in times like COVID-19, we have to remember that he has power over disease. And although we might pray for somebody to get better, we, we're never sure um, whether they will get better or not. We have to leave that to God. It's his choice. It's Jesus's choice. And we'll never really quite understand that until we go to be with Jesus in heaven. Uh, we won't understand fully why he does choose to heal some people and not others. But it's good to pray if you ever feel ill or if you have a, a friend or a loved one that uh, is ill, prayer first is the, the thing to do and pray for, for healing. And sometimes we need to go to a doctor and uh, get the help that we can through a doctor because um, doctors have skill and knowledge that can help us and God can heal through doctors. Okay, so let's pray now. Heavenly Father, thank you for this true story from the Bible and for the way it teaches us that Jesus is no ordinary man, but is God. Thank you too that this story teaches us how much you love people, how much you love us and want to help us with any problems we have. Please help us now and people all around the world as we go through such a difficult time in this pandemic. And we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So stay close to the Lord and he will stay close to you. That's what the Bible says. Okay, see you next week. Bye-bye.